the tallest thing humans built after the pyramids? Uh, I think it's a building in Dubai. No. <laughs> so in other words, From what's the next tallest thing after the pyramids? Oh, right after. Yeah. What, what is the next tallest thing we built? Stable structure after the pyramids. What? The Eiffel Tower. Really? Yes. 18, whatever, 89, 18, late 1800s in huh. Paris, the Eiffel Tower. Huh. That was the first stable structure we built as a civilization that was taller than the pyramids. So the Egyptians knew how to, they knew architecture. They knew. No one's taken that away from them. But to claim they have some secret knowledge of the functionings of the universe? No. No. Well, people love saying that kind of stuff. Yeah, and it but, makes for a great TV. But the fact that they didn't have steel and the fact that we're, you're dealing with uh, the very very most recent 2500 BC yeah. and they built You just the, have to be more uh, in, ingenious, more innovative yes. than we otherwise would have to be. Yeah. And how do you move the blocks? How do you, how do they make right. stone hinge? Those those rocks are nowhere in the region. Mm -hmm. They were carted from so they found a place where those rocks were uh, would would have been mined, mm -hmm. removed, and yeah, and those are some big ass rocks. Yeah, as are the ones. But it, it's, it's not less impressive because they're just big. Like what the the thing about the pyramids that's so impressive is the precision and the sheer numbers. Two million our best under six hundred thousand stones. Our best understanding of Stonehenge is that it's a functioning observatory that can actually predict eclipses. So. I, got, I, I just got to yeah. bitch slap you there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Stonehenge is not impressive. It's just no, big it's stones. Certain, they're, certainly lined, certainly impressive. they're lined with the summer right. solstice. Right. They have, there are holes that are not stones, but they're 56 holes, which is three times the, the Saros, which is the cycle of eclipses, of the matching of the orbits of the sun and the moon in the sky, the paths of the sun and the moon in the sky. And when they match up, you get an eclipse. Is there? Is it's it an possible? eclipse observatory. A guy named... That's absolutely what it is there's a book published in the, in the 1970s by a guy named uh, 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 David Dawkins it's not Richard Dawkins but it's another one of these Hawkins uh, uh, Rich, Richard Hawkins Richard Hawkins Hawking Hawking Hawkins damn one of them dudes damn what a, well we got our top crack researchers here Jamie's on the ball um, just look up the, the title of his book was Stonehenge decoded just look up the title of that book anyhow uh, it's highly convincing, and we all we're all there with it. There's no. So it's essentially just a study of the position of the stones in relationship to the, the where the okay Gerald Hawkins. Gerald Hawkins. Thank you. There we go. <laughs> yeah, Stonehenge decoded. Uh, so he, I visited Stonehenge as a kid uh, at age fifteen on an expedition, mm. and he was the expedition head. Oh wow. Yeah. So how lucky for you. Yeah, it was uh, it was good, and that stuck with me, which is why. I named this phenomenon in Manhattan where the sun sets along the street. I saw grid. that. I uh, saw that on your Instagram. Yeah, yeah. So so I named that Manhattan Henge, sort of <laughs> hearkening back to my early days, thinking about the alignment of the sun mm. and structures that we might build. Cause, so twice a year, for those viewers or listeners who don't know, twice a year, the Manhattan street grid, which is not perfectly aligned north-south, the Manhattan street grid uh, will... The sun will set exactly on the grid. Uh, and, and, that would and, a great and, and what's up there now, that image, what's not obvious, is that picture is taken along a street that is itself three miles long, and then you're crossing a uh, the Hudson River, and then there's New Jersey on the other side. So people try to zoom in on it, but really, what you really should do is zoom out from it, and then you get the vanishing point uh, on it. So yeah, all those are zoom, zoomed in. Um, let's go to, yeah, that one looks more like, like my photo. Wait, go back to that other one. Yeah. See, well, so, so that's on 34th street, <clears throat> the one you see now. And then you get this sparkling effect that happens twice a year. Twice that, a year. That sort of crazy wild light effect. Yes. That looks like yes. photoshopped almost. Yeah. Get, there's a, an image on, uh, his Instagram that is linked on my Instagram, the most recent photo. Oh, okay. There he goes. Oh, there's you with the selfie. That's the selfie. Look right. Okay. You. So come on down. Powerful afro. Oh, Damn, yeah. That's strong. That was my first selfie. How old were you? I was uh, 14. Four, uh, let me see. It was 19, probably 1974. Wow. So I would have been 15. I think I've been 14 or 15. So your path of curiosity was set Oh, it very, goes back. It goes back. Very early.